Hello, cherry lovers. I was a little under the weather, but we're back. Uh, stay tuned because I'm going to talk to you in depth about uh, cherry trees, apple trees, uh, the rootstock, uh, how to plant them, the different ways to train them. And because a lot of you guys wanted to know more, so I dug more into it. I've got some charts that's going to go up here, and I'm going to show you guys in depth. So stay tuned, and I'm going to show you all that. Okay, cheer lovers. What I'm going to talk to you guys today about is a little bit more in depth about uh, uh, the way you plant them, how you plant them, uh, how you want to st structure your tree. Uh, so the first thing that's going to show up up here is the chart is the three standard ways of common fruit tree training systems. Okay, and that means that uh, you're, the way you want to train your tree to look. So. Here's, here's the first one, and this is the one I use. It's called the Central Leader. It's on the far page over there. It looks like a tall, slender type tree, almost like a pine tree shape. That's the Central Leader. Okay. The next one that a lot of people use is the Modified Central Leader. It's a little bit different, a little more bushier, and I'm trying that one up there too on my cherry trees. But there's also what they call an open vase, or I call it the goblet look. A lot of people, a lot of cherry trees or a lot of cherry orchards use this and it opens because it opens up the tree and lets the air and stuff through. I like the central leaders better because I just like the way they grow. Plus, it, they'll grow a little bit and they don't bush out as much underneath my high tunnels. So I'm going with the central leaders. But if you look at the, the this chart here, there's three of them. Those are the standard ways that you set your tree up to grow or prune it the way you want it. And this is good for apples and cherries. It also is for organic or non-organic. You can use them either way. This training system right here, those are the three that you're going to use. And I just thought I'd, you know, I'm going to bring and put charts up here so that you guys get to see this is what I'm using. This is what the big orchards are using. This may help you guys with your small orchards and to make your trees produce the way you want them to produce. So I'm going to keep taking these charts and going. We're going to go on to the next chart, and I'll come right back. Okay, this, this chart here is showing you the, the way that you should train your trees the first, second, and third year. Over on the, would be on the, the left, uh, your first year, here you see that it's just a, what they call a whip, all right, and no branches. Okay, you cut it off about two to three feet, and then when you plant it, and then once you plant that tree, then it's going to grow its own branches and you can start training it to go into the second year. Of course, on the second year, they have show you the little marks on that, on the chart there in the second year. It shows the charts where to trim that tree and what to trim off that tree in the second year. That's what they call a new leaders. Okay. In the third year, the new leaders, they show you how to print, trim the tree in the third year. And after about the third year, you should be able to trim these trees and they'll, they'll get to the size and the shape that you want them. But that's what you should do when you first plant a tree. These are the three, three years are the critical ones for cherries and apples. These are for cherries and apples. These are not for peaches and nectarines and everything else because they have a little bit different way they, they prune them and they set them up for the first year. But Always, 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 if you're looking that third year, look at how far up off the ground. They want you to cut those branches two feet or higher. They don't want you to keep them down near the ground. In the second year, it shows there you need to trim those lower ones off. It's just not feasible to ch keep those small branches because it, it can cause disease and all kinds of stuff coming up from the ground. So they want to get them branches up off the ground as far as possible, but yet not too far to where you can't get up and pick the fruit from the ground. That's what they've learned. So that's what this chart ch tells you. And like I said, this is for cherries and apples. So, okay, let's go on to the next chart. Okay, this chart here shows basically... I wanted to show you this chart because it shows scaffold, scaffold branches or scaffold branches and wood spacers. Wood spacers 
space the branches out, help you. You can, you can buy these pretty much anywhere you make your own. Just space the branches out. You've seen me use clothespins to pull the branches down. Spacers can do the same thing. Or you've seen me and Joyce both tie the branches down to train them to go out to a 40 degree to 60 degree angle. Well, in this chart right up there, that's what this is showing you. It's showing an open center fruit tree, which is the, the goblet look. That's what they're trying to do. They're trying to open that up so that it lets the air through, and they're showing you they're using the wood spacers to space it open. This is good for good for apples and cherries now. But I thought I'd show you this chart because this chart shows how you get your tree to open up in the, you know, open center. That's what they call it. I call it the goblet. But that's what they're trying to show you. And this, now, this is the way your tree should be set up. And this is the way you should tr uh, trim it based on what the last chart showed you for first, second, and third year in trimming. Okay, let's go on to the next. Okay, and this chart here is showing you the prune, pruning the central leader form, meaning type typically the one that I use, okay? And this is for peaches, apples, and cherries, okay? In the first year of what you're pruning, they're showing you what you need to stub back in that first chart up in the left-hand corner. They want you to head it out at about 40 inches. So if you somewhere between 36 and 40 inches, you trim that tree and stub it. You don't want it to look when you first plant it with all those branches. You want to stub it back. So that's what they're showing you in the first year of pruning, to stub that back. So now in the first dormancy, now you let it go and, and there's what it's supposed to look like after you prune it and then it come the first year. Okay, the first year after you plant it is your first dormancy. That first February, that's what you want to do. And that's the way on the right hand of that, that chart on the first dormancy, this is the way the tree should look. All right, if not, it doesn't have to be perfect, but in that form or shape, not all them branches on the left. Now, when we go into the second year of dormancy, which is the second year of your tree, in the spring, late winter, when you prune it, this is what they're showing you, how you should prune your tree, and then what it should, or what it should look like, and what it should, you should prune. As you can see, you take off quite a few branches. You don't want to. My first time out doing this, I didn't want to do it either. I did not want to prune them because I was afraid I was going to kill the trees. But I've learned that pruning these trees they sure help, and they and, and as you can see in the video when I was pruning it, how it makes the thing the tree form the way it's supposed to. So it's it's very important that you do this, even though you feel like you're getting ready to kill the tree, you shouldn't. Now in the third year, this is what they're telling you how you should tree. Notice how bushy it is, how it grew in the third year, but they want you to trim it back and still open that tree up so that it gets air through. That is a must. And then, and from that year on, it's kind of like light pruning. You go through and you just find certain things that need to be trimmed off and just kind of keep the tree looking nice and open. But the first two, first, second, and third year is critical for you guys to get your trees. It doesn't matter if you're in an orchard, <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> it doesn't matter if you're a small orchard, a large orchard. If you want your trees to produce good fruit, this is what they're telling you to do. And the only reason why they're telling us this is because this is how they're making good fruit. If you want good fruit in your orchards, you want fruit like in the stores, this is the stuff you guys got to do before you do it. You just don't go out there and just clip, do whatever you want to do and say, well, that's the way I, you know, that's the way I do it because you're not going to get good results. You really aren't. And I'm good for that myself saying, well, this looks good enough. This is no, you have to prune them the right way. And once you get them pruned the right way, you're happy with what you're done because your fruit's going to turn out in the long run a heck of a lot better than if you just do it your way. So we're going to go on to the next chart and uh, we'll keep going. Okay, in this chart up here, this shows you the different uh, systems, and they're not so much as on a trellis system, as much as this is what the standard orchards use and the training systems that they use to produce their cherries on cherry trees and apple trees. So the first one on the left is called the KGB, which is called the Kim Green Bush. 
All right. They make it into like basically your goblet look and they're showing you how this was basically after the third year. The, the bigger, the bigger little squares are the first year. The smaller little squares are the second year and the little bitty squares making the branches are the third year. Now that's the KGB system. That is the goblet look or the open trellis or the open system. Uh, the second one there is called the TSA, which is a tall spindle axis. Or you can go tall spindle axis as in what I'm doing for the, you know, the central leader type system that I'm using. They call it the tall spindle axis. That is, and it shows you the first year, the second year, and the third year, the way you should train these trees. And that's the second training system that they call it. The next one is called the SSA. SSA is super slender axis. They use this mainly on a trellis system, kind of like when you, you use uh, making your grapevines and everything. You put them on trellises and everything to keep it more slender. You can plant the trees closer together. You use uh, reduced rootstock so that they can plant them real close. And that's the newest system that they're up, they're, they're trying. That works, like I said, on trellises and it's all up and coming and new. Basically, what we're going to use, most people in their orchards are going to use the TSA and the KGB system. Uh, the next, the, like I said, the SSA and now the UFO on the out, that's the upright fruiting. That is where you're using a trellis, but you're turning the tree on the side for the first year. Okay, and turning it sideways. And then you just grow upright branches all the way up. And I mean, it's super slender down through there, and the cherries just hang. This is a new way of growing. Uh, hopefully in the next few years, I'm going to try this system to see how it works, and hopefully the system works for us. But that's the four type of systems that we use. The two type of systems the most are the KGB, the TSA. The other systems are new, which is the SSA and the UFO. There are the four systems they use. There's other systems out there, but the main systems are right here. This is what we use. So I thought I'd show you guys in this chart what we use, what the new systems are coming. Maybe down the road you guys might want to try the SSA and the UFO. I'm going to try the UFO down the road, but right now I'm just using the TSA, TS, TSA and the KGB. So, all right, let's go on to the next Okay, in this uh, chart, it shows you from A to H, and it shows you the different places that you should prune your tree. So look over this tree, and look over your tree, or you can print the chart, or look the chart over, whatever, but look at the tree, and then check your trees, and tell you if you need to have these branches removed. First of all, is number A, if you look through the chart, it shows A where the suckers are on the bottom, and there are some suckers on your branches that go right straight up if you look at this chart. Okay, B are stubs or broken branches. So you look around your tree to see if there's any stubs or broken branches. If there are, you need to take them off. Okay, C is downward growing branches. C are the branches like at the bottom of the chart, you see C where the branches are growing down, up, looked up through the chart. They've got them lettered there. If you see trees, your branches are in that position, you need to remove them. All right. E or D is rubbing branches. If you see any rubbing branches, they need to be removed. Okay, folks. Now we're on to number E, which is up. Upward growing interior branches. Okay, if you look on this chart up there, like I said, you, you can see all the E's and it tells where the, where the, uh, branches need to be removed. So there's the, the, the I'll look for all the E's on that, that chart and now that shows you what you should remove. And, uh, now we're going to go on to, uh, H or F, which is competing branches look all for all the f's on that chart and that if you look at your tree then that's the, the branches that need to be removed and and you keep going on down to g which is narrow crotch you, know, you gotta they, they want you to keep it at 40 to 60 degree angles all right and if you have a branch that's too close which is right dead center g is it's way too close going too pointed too straight up you want to remove that branch okay and h is 
I don't even know what they call that, but it's called something about warrices. If that's, uh, they got it on there, it's about dead center, and it shows the branch going out. I don't know if it's uh, a branch that's uh, diseased or what. Anyways, they're showing you. Now, I thought I'd show you on this chart. I didn't understand what H was, but uh, there's the different letters. That, and they got it on the chart here, and they're showing everything that needs to be removed. So if you look at your tree and look at this chart, if you have any A's, B's, C's down to H, you guys need to remove those branches so that your young trees will grow the proper way. And this is for all fruit trees. So, all right, we'll go on to the next chart. Okay, this chart here up there on the screen is for training and pruning upright forms for peaches and nectarines. Notice that the branches are just a little bit different shape. And they're showing you in the first dormant year how you have, basically, it looks to me like two central leaders. Uh, of course, it grows and grows out. I guess peaches grow real quick and they grow a lot. So they got a lot of branches. Well, then in that first year of pruning, you have to go back and they're showing you two central leaders. And it's basically like a goblet shape. That's what they're trying to show you. And then in the second year, it shows you the leaves and beyond. Now they're showing you what, how it should be in the second season. How they're trying to keep that open goblet look for you and trim it up to make sure that the peaches, because I guess they need extra air. I am not sure. I thought I'd throw this, this, uh, chart on here for people that, that like peaches and, uh, I got some nectarines and I'm going to try this on, on that training system on that. But I don't know because I don't have any peaches. So this shows you how you should train your trees the first and second year so that your tree will produce good quality peaches. I thought I'd throw that chart in for anybody out there that are growing peaches. I'm not. I'm growing apples and cherries and nectarines. So, but for some of you guys, there's the chart that you want to look at to give your tree a good, you know, good fruiting start for uh, good good quality fruit. Okay, cherry lovers, that's going to wrap everything up. Like I said, I hope you enjoy this video. Uh, I just want to sh bring some charts out, show you guys what I've learned, try to give you guys an idea of the proper way to, you know, so all you guys out there in the homesteading communities or just people that want to grow trees can learn the different systems so that you can produce good quality fruit uh, instead of wondering why your fruit is so small or why isn't your tree growing right? Or why are you having all kinds of problems? If you live by these charts, you should be able to uh, produce some good fruit. Unless, like I said, unless your tree gets diseased or something like that. So, if you guys like this video, hit the thumbs up. Like and subscribe. It don't cost you nothing. We sure would like you guys to come back. Uh, through the summer, I'm going to try and keep giving you guys... Some of these informational stuff to kind of give you an idea how to get your fruit trees growing the way you want them to grow. So thanks for stopping by and we'll see you on the next one. Bye now.